So in the first part of this video series, we went over running PySpark jobs against a Bitdami Docker container. And we're gonna repeat the same thing using Scala instead of Python. Now, one thing I do need to mention is that um, this series and this repo as well, which is available on GitHub, is has both code and configuration, but it will put an emphasis on the configuration side. So I've created a table here including all of the versions of every tool that I'm using. So we're using the Java 8 SDK, we're using Scala 2.11.12, Python 3.6, PySpark 2.4.6. And one way to confirm that our versions match is to check out to see what jars the Bitnami Docker container is using. Now, we did specify that we want uh, 2.4.6. So let's go ahead and check out where they're located. So I'm in the container now. I'm in the Spark home directory and I'm going to cd into jars. And we're going to take a quick look and look at the Spark jar specifically. And you can see here that they're all using Gala 2.11 and that they're all 2.4.6. So this is important because when we build our own jar for our application, we should ensure that we're using the same versions as well. So here I've got Scala version 2.11.12 selected with the compatibility version as 2.11 and the Spark version as 2.4.6. And for every Spark dependency that I'm passing, for every Spark dependency that I'm downloading, I'm specifying that Scala compatibility version and the Spark version. So again, the versioning of our dependencies in the POM XML file of our Spark driver app should match what's on our Spark Docker containers. Now, if you watched the first video, you'll remember that for our PySpark app, I used a small helper method, get Spark context. Uh, really, this should be get Spark session um, to set a variety of configuration parameters to our Spark session, including the name of the app, which was employees, the deploy mode, which is client, and the most important really are Spark master URL and Spark driver host. And I've essentially copied that over into Scala here into this get spark session method. And we're doing the exact same thing, just using Scala conventions and methods instead of Python. So inside the main directory, we've essentially got two projects here, a Python project, which you saw in the first video, and a Scala project, which is what we're going to be executing now. And we've got this Livy on Docker app object with our main method here. And you can see that we're using the get spark session method and passing in an app name of Livy on Docker app. And we're going to be reusing this jar for a later video that will cover Apache Livy. So this is going to be a fairly simple word count app. It does accept one parameter. We have to pass a path to a data directory. And you can see I've got the data directory here with a few poems listed. And the app will grab the files in the data directory and perform a word count of each while tokenizing and removing stop words from the raw data. And we'll get an output at the end showing us the name of the poem in one column and the number of unique words in the second column. Now I do rely pretty heavily on IntelliJ for this next part. Uh, you can run this under a different configuration or from the command line. You just got to remember to pass this data directory as the argument. Well, let's go ahead and kick it off. now we can move over to our browser 
And we can see here, we've got our old app, the Python job that we ran earlier titled employees. And we should see our new app, Livy on Docker, running as well. And you can see here that it's completed in eight seconds. And if we move back to the shell, we can see the output here. So what this is telling us is that Xanadu had the highest unique workout with 165 words and Jabberwocky had the lowest unique word count with 72 words. So that's it for this video. We've gone over two items. First, running a PySpark job against a Spark cluster in Docker. And with this video, running a Scala job. And as you can see here, the configuration is pretty similar between both. The main thing again is setting Spark master and the spark driver host and next up we're going to take a look at how we can extend our docker image to add in support for apache Livy as well